broadcasting from various countries around the world using voice over IP technology. This is VoIP Uncovered, a VoIP on Solutions UK podcast. I'm Kathleen Reed. Recently, Digium announced both the release of Asterisk 1.8 and the development of Asterisk SCF, billed as the world's first high-performance, distributed, scalable, fault-tolerant open-source communications framework. Today, we're speaking with Steve Sokol, Digium's Marketing Director for Asterisk and Custom Telephony Solutions, to learn a little more about what we can expect from this software and the project going forward. Thanks for joining us today, Steve. So first, why don't you tell Voipon's listeners what's new in Asterisk 1.8? Well, we've got kind of a laundry list of new features that we've added in with Asterisk 1.8. I suppose the very top of that list, I would put in uh, full secure calling with secure RTP. Um, so that's the, uh, the the biggest thing. Another thing that's really important is IPv6. There aren't a whole lot of phones out there yet that support it, but there's a huge push to try and get IPv6 uh, enabled for uh, telephony systems, phones, call control mechanisms like asterisk, etc., because they're basically the world is running out of IPv4 addresses. So that's pretty critical. So we've added a number of ISDN related features, um, and we've actually applied all of those to SIP as well. So anything that you can do on an ISDN network, you should be able to do on a SIP network also. Uh, one of them is call completion services, and this is uh, effectively the same thing as CAMPON, if you're uh, familiar with that in the PBX world, where you dial a number. Uh, the number's unavailable, they're either busy or they don't answer, and you're able to request a callback when they indicate that they're available, either by hanging up if they were busy or by going through a full you know, uh, off-hook, on-hook cycle if they were unavailable. Available, again, both in SIP and in um, ISDN BRI networks. We've also added in uh, advice of charge. So if you're uh, connected to an ISDN network and the service provider supports this, you'll actually be able to find out in real time how much a call is costing you. We've added in support for um, uh, what's basically caller ID updates throughout the call. Um, technically, this would be called, uh, let's see, connected party identification uh, notification. And what's happening is when you make a call, you know, you'll normally see the digits that you dialed on your phone. And when the call arrives at my desk, I'll see your uh, caller ID information. With this new feature, you'll actually get an update that uh, replaces the number that you dialed with my name. So you'll see that you're connected to Steve and that I'm connected to Kathleen. And then if I transfer you to somebody else within the organization, your uh, phone will receive an update that indicates who you're connected to at that point. So you're actually always able to see who you're really talking to, not just the digits you dialed or who you originally were connected with. We've added calendaring capabilities into Asterisk 1.8. So you're actually able to build an Asterisk solution that queries your calendar, if it's on Exchange or iCal uh, standard, and the system is able to check what you're doing at the moment. And if you happen to be scheduled in a meeting, instead of delivering the call to your desk, it might drop it directly into your voice mailbox. So there's all sorts of possibilities. And again, because Asterisk is so flexible because it's a toolkit, you can make this do just about anything you can imagine that would involve a calendar. We've added in XMPP distributed messaging, which means that now uh, you can connect two Asterisk systems together, and they can share uh, device state information or message waiting indication between each other. So if you're on Asterisk Box 1 and I'm on Asterisk Box 2, and I go off-hook, your Asterisk can be updated to display my status as being off-hook. So important if you're building a clustered uh, solution out of asterisk systems. We've added in Google Talk and Google Voice support. So you can actually use Google Talk uh, as a trunk line into your asterisk system. And right now that's actually really cool because they're offering free calling, at least through the end of the year. Um, and you can you know, make calls to and from Google users, just sort of the same way we added uh, Skype for Asterisk in uh, a couple of years ago as a commercial product. This, because Google's you know, been very open about the protocol, is just now a standard part of Asterisk 1.8. So there's a long list of stuff that's gone into uh, the new version. Um, there's actually a changelog uh, document that you can find at uh, downloads.asterisk.org which will actually show you all 200 of the major en enhancements that were made in, uh, in Asterisk 1.8. We've also done a number of things related to the sort of process of developing it. We've implemented a new constant testing process, which allows us to see if we make a change to asterisk, whether it's, whether it's going to have a negative impact or not. And it prevents a lot of what we would call regressions or, or errors in the code related to new enhancements that we're trying to make. So that's really helped uh, improve code quality. The other thing is that we've taken a new uh, sort of direction in the way that we do development. We're using a process called Scrum, 
uh, which defines a given period of time during which we're going to do development, which we call a sprint, and everybody works to meet that. So we're able to more accurately um, determine when a new feature, a new function will actually have been uh, made available in the mainline code base. It seems that Asterisk has often been best suited to the SME because of its difficulty scaling beyond a certain level. It's rumored that this will be fixed with the upcoming Asterisk SCF. How does the scalability of Asterisk SCF compare to projects like FreeSwitch and the new Asterisk 1.8? Well, to answer that, I'll just kind of give you a little bit of background on Asterisk SCF's architecture. It's built as a distributed application. So that means that instead of being one process running on one computer, it's a whole bunch of processes that can be running on one computer or on 100 computers or on 1,000 computers. And it is architected from the ground up to, to be able to basically spread the load across all of the members uh, of the cluster that you're building. So instead of having to build a beefier and beefier computer with more RAM and more processor power, et cetera, you can simply add more low-cost computers. And you can also spread it geographically across a, a broad um, spread of, of locations. So you don't have to have everything running in one place on one machine in order to scale it up. And really, this is unlike anything else that's on the market today in the, the open source world. There isn't anybody else who's built a scalable uh, communication framework as the underpinnings for uh, voice applications. And actually, it goes beyond voice. It's, it's really uh, unified communications applications because the same architecture can be applied to things like instant messaging, video conferencing, uh, desktop sharing, um, sort of go to webinar type applications. We're really excited about this, and I think it's going to be a huge opportunity for everybody who's in the open source communication space. How many simultaneous calls can you comfortably handle with version 1.8? And how will this work with Asterisk SCF to improve functionality for enterprises of all sizes? Well, with Asterisk 1.8, again, you're, you're looking at a single computer running the Asterisk process. And of course, you can, you can expand that by running multiple Asterisks, but it's not really built to, uh, to be a seamless sort of mesh that you can expand infinitely. So with 1.8, the number that you can run is fairly high if you have a very powerful computer um, and you've got uh, a good network you know, connecting up to it. We've had people get up to, uh, say, 5,000 concurrent calls through it, and that was with, uh, with Asterisk 1.6. So with Asterisk 1.8, we're expecting that you can get even more because we've made some significant enhancements in the internal mechanisms used within Asterisk. We don't have a hard number because really the number of concurrent calls you can get out of an Asterisk system really depends on what you're doing with those calls. Are you recording them? Are you monitoring them? Are you uh, um, converting them from one codec to another? Uh, it's a very difficult question to answer, and it sort of depends very heavily on what it is you're trying to accomplish. With Asterisk SCF, the answer really is it, there's no limit on the, uh, the scalability to it. You'll be able to basically grow it to the point that, uh, that you need simply by adding additional computers running the services that you like. So if you need additional resources to do transcoding, you instantiate that on a number of computers, and the, uh, the cluster will detect that, hey, I've got more resources available to do transcoding and automatically merge that into the sort of mesh that it creates. So that's the, uh, the magic that we're headed towards. So what prompted these changes, and is Digium planning a push into the larger enterprise or carrier space? Well, the changes are really prompted by the, uh, the, the natural progression of an open source project. We created Asterisk 11 years ago to solve one particular problem. Mark Spencer needed a, a phone system for his office. And as people got involved in the project and they added new capabilities into it, the total potential of the system grew. But it was still based around the architecture that you know, considered a single PBX for a single office as the, uh, the, the target. What we're doing now is we're kind of going back and, and addressing some of the things that simply couldn't be handled with the architecture that we had based on the way computers worked 11 years ago and the way Linux worked and the way businesses worked. Uh, since the internet has expanded, since bandwidth is much more available now than it was then, since VoIP has really become a mature technology, uh, we really needed to come back and address uh, a change. And in terms of the applications that you can take this to, certainly. Um, I, I can't s comment on whether we're planning uh, products based for the enterprise or carrier space, but that's absolutely the sorts of uh, organizations we knew would be able to take advantage of asterisk SCF. 
Fantastic. So, and I'm sure some of Voipon's audience would like to know your take on how simple the upgrade process is from the previous Asterix release. For example, are there any known issues that may limit someone at this point from using this release in a production environment? Actually, we worked very hard to make sure that Asterisk 1.8 had as few disruptive changes as possible uh, versus the previous versions. So if you've uh, done an upgrade from a, a 1.2 to a 1.4 or a 1.4 to a 1.6 era asterisk, you know that there's always some dial plan changes that have to be made and some changes in the AGI interface and some changes in manager events. And we really tried to minimize that. So you should have very little uh, you know, that you have to change in the, you know, as you move from asterisk 1.0 six or so to, to 1.8. Now, that's not to say that there's nothing that has to be changed. So we again recommend that if you're you know, building a large scale system on this, that you test it before you throw it out there. Don't just simply move directly, but it shouldn't require much in the way of changes. Thanks again for your time today, Steve. Steve Sokol is Digium's Marketing Director for Asterisk and Custom Telephony Solutions. This has been a VoIP on VoIP Uncovered podcast brought to you by VoIP on Solutions. For more information, please visit www.voipon.co.uk.